In this video, we're going to focus on rotational power, work, energy, and torque. So the work done on an object is equal to the force acting on the object times the object's displacement. Now in trig, you've learned that arc length, which is represented by S, is equal to the angle theta times the radius. In physics, the arc length S is equal to the linear displacement, which we'll call D. Theta is the angular displacement. R is the radius of the circle. So we can replace the linear displacement D with the angular displacement times the radius. Now, if we apply a force on a circle or on a wheel, the radius of the circle becomes the moment arm or the lever arm. So therefore, the torque is the force times the moment arm. In this case, the force times the radius of the circle. So therefore, we can replace F times R with torque. So rotational work is equal to the torque times the angular displacement. Notice the similarities between these two equations. Torque is the rotational equivalent of force. Theta, the angular displacement, is the rotational equivalent of linear displacement. So just as work is force times displacement, work is also torque times angular displacement. Now there are other ways to calculate the work. Work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. That is, work is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Now this is translational kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared. Now work is also equal to the change in rotational kinetic energy. That is the final rotational kinetic energy minus the initial rotational kinetic energy. And rotational kinetic energy is 1 half inertia times omega squared, where omega is the angular speed, which is the rotational equivalent of linear speed. So notice the similarities between these two equations. Now the next thing that we need to calculate is power. Power is work divided by time. Now we know work is force times displacement. And displacement divided by time is velocity. So power is force times velocity. Now the rotational equivalent of that equation is this. Power is torque times angular velocity. So to derive it, you need to realize that V is equal to omega times R. So replace in V with omega times R, and then we know that F times R is the torque. We could come up with this equation. Power is torque times angular velocity. So you have different ways in which you can calculate the power acting on the system. Keep in mind, the power is measured in watts. And power tells you the rate at which energy is transferred. So let's say if you have a 500 watt motor, that means that this motor can convert 500 joules of electrical energy into mechanical energy every second. So let's say if you have an 800 watt motor, that means every second, 800 joules of electrical energy can be converted to mechanical energy. And so power tells you the rate at which energy is transferred, how fast energy can be transferred per unit time. So keep this in mind, 1 watt is 1 joule of energy transferred every second. Now if you need to calculate the energy, energy is power multiplied by time. So if you have the power in watts, then multiply it by the time in seconds. And keep in mind, 1 horsepower is 746 watts. And 1 kilowatt is 1,000 watts. Now finally, another equation that you need to keep in mind is that torque is equal to inertia times alpha, Newton's second law for rotation, the same way as force is mass times acceleration. So angular acceleration is the rotational equivalent of linear acceleration. Inertia and mass, they basically play the same role. They resist changes in motion. And torque is the rotational equivalent of force. 
Now let's work on this problem. A 15 kilogram disc with a radius of 2 meters accelerates from rest to 40 radians per second in 5 seconds. How much work was required to accelerate it to this speed? So go ahead and see if you could find the answer. What equation do you think we need to use in this example? One way in which we can calculate the work is by using this formula. It's the change in rotational kinetic energy. So it's going to be the final rotational kinetic energy minus the initial rotational kinetic energy. Now, initially the disk was at rest, so there was no initial rotational kinetic energy. At least it was zero. So the work is equal to the final rotational kinetic energy, which is one-half inertia times omega squared. Now first, let's calculate the inertia of a disk, which is one-half mr squared. So we have the mass of the disk, which is 15 kilograms, and the radius is 2. 2 squared times 15 is 60, and half of 60 is 30. So the inertia is 30 kilograms times meters squared. Now let's calculate the work. So it's 1 half times the inertia, which is 30, times the final angular speed, which is 40. Now let's not forget to square. So 40 squared is 1600 times 30 times 0.5. And so the work done to accelerate it to this speed is 24,000 joules. So this is the answer to part A. Now let's see if we can get the same answer using another process. Now keep in mind the work is also equal to the torque times the angular displacement. So pause the video and see if you could find a way to get the same answer using this equation. So first we need to calculate the torque that is acting on the disk. And torque is equal to inertia times alpha. Now we already have inertia. We said it was 1 half times the mass of 15 times the radius squared, which is 30. So let's calculate the angular acceleration. So what equation can help us to find angular acceleration? We can use this one. Omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha t. The final angular speed is 40 radians per second. The initial is 0 and t is 5. So alpha is going to be 40 divided by 5, which is 8 radians per second squared. So now we can calculate the torque, now that we have inertia and alpha. So it's inertia times alpha, so it's 30 times the angular acceleration of 8. Now we know that 3 times 8 is 24, so 30 times 8 is 240. And the units for torque is newtons times meters. Now there's one more thing we need to find. We need to find the angular displacement. So how can we find theta? How can we calculate its value? We can use this equation. The angular um, displacement is equal to the average angular speed multiplied by the time. To find the average angular speed, it's basically the sum of the initial and the final speed divided by 2. So therefore, we could use this equation. The initial angular speed is 0. And the final angular speed is 40 times 5 seconds. So if you average 0 and 40, if you add them up, divide by 2, you get an average speed of 20. So it's going to be 20 times 5, which will give us an angular displacement of 100 radians. Now keep in mind, omega is in radians per second, and if you multiply it by the time in seconds, you should get the angular displacement in radians. So now we can calculate the rotational work, which is the torque, that's 240 newtons times meters, that's tau, times theta, which is 100 radians. So 240 times 100, you just add the three zeros, so it's going to be 24,000. So the way you calculate it, it's 24 times 1, which is 24, and then add the three zeros. So notice that we get the same answer as what we had before. 
Now let's move on to part B. How can we calculate the average power exerted on a disk? One way to calculate power is to take the work and divide it by the time. So the work done on the object is 24,000 joules. And that work was done in a time period of 5 seconds. So if you take 24,000 joules and divide it by 5 seconds, this will give you 4,800 watts or joules per second, which if you divide that by 1,000, that's equivalent to 4.8 kilowatts. So let's see if we can get the same answer using another equation. Now keep in mind, power is force times velocity. Now we don't have the force or the velocity, however, we do know the torque and the angular speed. So power is torque times angular velocity. So if we wish to find the average power, we need to use the torque and multiply it by the average angular speed. So the average angular speed is going to be one half the initial plus the final angular speed. So the initial is zero, the final is 40, and the torque, I believe that was 240, if I remember correctly. So half of 40 is 20. So we have an average angular speed of 20, and 20 times 240 is 4,800. So this will give us the same answer, 4,800 watts. So this equation works if you wish to calculate the rotational power exerted on a disk.